ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪರಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಬುಧಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತ್ಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯಾಧಾರಿಣೆ ಪಂಚಕ ಪತ್ರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂವ್ಯವಚ ಪತಿ ಭಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪಥೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಭಿಖಂಥ ರಾಧಾಖಂಥ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದವನೀಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗಿರಾಧಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾರಿ ಗೌರವಕ್ತ ವಿಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವಕ್ತ ವಿಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವಕ್ತ ವಿಂದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರವಕ್ತ ವಿಂದ This morning we're reading from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Leela chapter 13 text 43 I'm uh, glad for this opportunity to read with you and discuss Chaitanya Charitamrita because it's forcing me to uh, prepare uh, for a, a course that I'm supposed to teach in a few months in Bhaktivedanta College in Radhadesh. We're going to be doing a, a two-week uh, intensive course on the Chaitanya Charitamrita for the, student, for the third year students there. The students who will be receiving a bachelor's degree in Vaishnava theology from the University of Wales at the end of this year. <laughs> We have nine students in the, in the third year, about tw- something over 20, 20 or 25 students altogether. All right, here we go. This chapter is the advent of Lord Chaitanya. Krishneravi yoga, or vijoga, Krishneravi yoga, jatta prema cheshtita. ಕೃಷ್ಣರ ವಿಜೋಗೆ ಜೊತ್ತ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಚೇಷ್ಟಿತ ಆಶಾದಿಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಕೊಯ್ಲ ಅಪ್ಪನ ವಂಚಿತ ಆಶಾದಿಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಕೊಯ್ಲ ಅಪ್ಪನ ವಂಚಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣರ ವಿಜೋಗೆ ಜತ್ತ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಚೇಷ್ಟಿತ ಅಶದಿಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಕೊಯ್ಲ ಅಪ್ಪನ ವಾಂಚಿತ
ಅಶ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಕೈಲ ಅಪ್ಪನ ವಾಂಚಿತ ವಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣರ ಅಫ್ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ವಿ ಯೋಗ ಇನ್ ಸಪರೇಷನ್ ಜೊತ ಆಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಲವಿಂಗ್ ಅಫೇರ್ಸ್ ಚೇಷ್ಟಿತ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಶ್ಚಾದಿಯ ಟೇಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದಮ್ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ಕೈಲ ಮೇಡ್ ಆಪನ ಓನ್ ವಾಂಚಿತ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ho. Translation, in separation from Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu relished all these ecstatic activities and thus he fulfilled his own desires. <laughs> purport. In the beginning of Ch- uh, sorry in the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita it is said that Lord Chaitanya appeared to taste the feelings of Radharani sorry the feelings Radharani felt upon seeing Krishna Krishna himself could not understand the ecstatic feelings of Radharani toward him and therefore he desired to accept the role of radharani and thereby taste these feelings lord chaitanya is krishna with the feelings of radharani in other words he is a combination of radha and krishna it is therefore said shri krishna chaitanya radha krishna nahe anno by worshiping shri chaitanya mahaprabhu alone one can relish the loving affairs of radha and krishna together one should therefore try to understand radha krishna not directly but through shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and through his devotees shila narottam das thakur therefore says rupa ragunath ಪೊರೆ ಹೊಯಿ ಬೆ ಆಕೃತಿ ಕೊಬೆ ಹಾಮ ಭುಜವೋ ಶೆ ಜುಗಲ ಪೀರೈತಿ ವೆನ್ ಶಲ್ ಐ ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಮೆಂಟಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟೋರ್ಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸನಾತನ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ರಘುನಾಥ್ ದಾಸ್ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಡೆವೋಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಎಲಿಜಿಬಲ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕೃಷ್ಣರ ವಿಯೋಗೆ ಜತ್ತ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಚೇಷ್ಟಿತ ಆಶ್ವದಿಯ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಕೋಯ್ಲ ಅಪ್ಪನ ವಂಚಿತ ಇನ್ ಸಪರೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ರೆಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟಾಟಿಕ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಸ್ ಹಿ ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಓನ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದಿ ಆಡ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೋರ್ಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದ ಮೇನ್ ಫೀಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ of how chaitanya mahaprabhu appears we also get some some summarizing in this chapter of what lord chaitanya is about i was thinking if i had to give a title to what to my uh, reflections on this verse i would somewhat daringly call it what does shri chaitanya mahaprabhu do for a living <laughs> I'll get back to that uh, eventually but I want to lead up to it by some reflection on uh, this chapter having come this is the 13th chapter of the Adi Leela can't remember exactly how many chapters the whole Chaitanya Charitamrita has I believe it's something around 50 or so chapters uh it's taking us in a sense all this time to get to you know the story of lord chaitanya's taking birth 
So that's kind of interesting. What's been going on up till now? To some extent, we could make a comparison to the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, the first canto, the entire first canto, 19 chapters of the first canto are really an introduction uh, leading us into what really gets going, the Bhagavatam gets going in the first part of the uh, second canto. And in a sense, uh, that's the first canto is an introduction. It's setting the stage, setting the scene uh, for all that's going to take place. Uh, the description, the the recitation by Sukadev Goswami to Maharaj Pariksit. Something like that is going on, although in a different way, in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I was trying to think of how to characterize what's happening in these first 12 chapters of the of the uh, of the Adi Lila I would suggest that really we're getting again a setting of the stage but it's not it's a different sort of setting does anyone want to anticipate what I might say about this what sort of a stage setting is going on in these first 12 chapters any any guesses? <laughs> okay. Saturday morning. Yes. Well, a lot of it's to do with establishing uh, Lord Chaitanya as the Supreme Personality of Godhead with mm -hmm. the different you know, incarnations that have appeared with him and they're... Yes. That is going on. What would you... How would you put that into abstract terms? Character description. Oh, okay. That's all. <laughs> that's going on, certainly. I was thinking of just saying he's uh, he. Who's he? Krishna Das Kaviraj is uh, setting the stage theologically. Uh, he's giving a theology of who is Lord Chaitanya by by saying yes, he is descending. He is the supreme personality of Godhead, and as Srila Prabhupada is indicating in the purport, he's. Um, he's being a lot more specific about who is this Krishna appearing as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's, he is Krishna, but then again, <laughs> he's taking on a mood of being not Krishna. In a way. Because he's taking on the mood of Srimati Radharani in separation from Krishna. Well, um, so he goes into an extensive theology, but how would we, how would we characterize that theology? You mentioned establishing uh, Lord Chaitanya as the supreme personality of Godhead. Is there some other way we might characterize this theology? Yes. Mad bhakti sadhvir bina. <clears throat> Supreme Personality of God is Sri Krishna is declaring that all I am complete in all opulences. Mm -hmm. All opulences means the six opulences. Uh -huh. But as I am, I am the only Rasha Grahi. Uh -huh. As me I am, I am nothing but Rasa enjoying okay. the Rasha of huh. all twelve Rasha incomplete. Oh. But in, and in order to enjoy that Rasha, in the previous chapter in Chaitanya Chaitanya, what I see, <laughs> by Prabhupada's blessing, that Rasha is the measurement. And Advaita Acharya is also Supreme Personality of Godhead. But he is proving, in this mm. chapter also, previous chapter, that to be equal to God is not the enjoyment, but to <laughs> serve. Okay. And enjoy that Rasha oh. is the enjoyment. <laughs> Very good. So Mahaprabhu came to drown everybody, all his expansion and plenary expansion mm -hmm. and all the living entity to same thing to... Drowning program. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 verse, let me ask, that verse that you quoted, is that 
With, whereabouts is that? Is that it's from in within? Nine, ninth Kento also, but it is also in Chaitanya Chaitanya. Do you remember? Is that yes. quoted? Yes, Naya Mana Mas- Oh, No, I mean, is it page? within these 12 uh, chapters? Uh, is it in Adi Lila or is it later? Uh, okay, it doesn't no. matter. I'm just, uh, just curious. <laughs> Not important. Okay, well, that's, yeah, very nice. So, drowning program, you can say. Theology of drowning. Uh, <laughs> Drowning in ecstasy, of course. I was thinking, kind of stepping, maybe a step before that, you're, you're going right to the depth, but maybe just, you know, stepping in. I wanted to say, this is a, it's a theology of divine descent, um, because we understand Lord Chaitanya decides, I, I want to appear, uh, and we understand from the Bhagavad Gita there are certain purposes that Krishna generally has for his descent, right? Ida, Ida, Hidharma, Siaglani, uh, and so on. But we understand that he here has a special purpose. So without going into what the purpose is, simply to say it's theology of descent with a special purpose is... is and, and, okay, we get a sense of what that special purpose is, but then the rest of the Chaitanya Charitamrita throws us in the deep end, you can say, and, uh, you know, we, we get to experience something of what is that purpose and to participate in that purpose. Okay, well, um, then we get into this chapter, uh, uh, this uh, 13th chapter, and we find not only that we're getting a description of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, which interestingly enough suddenly shifts into, and uh, Pran Govinda Ji, you can help me, what is the term for, uh, first of all, this type of verse that we just chanted, I know there's a name for this uh, type of a verse. Uh, it's not like Sanskrit, Anushtup, Trishtup, and so on. This is Bengali. So, is there a name for this? Krishna Ravi Yoga Jatta Prema Cheshtita. That rhythm. There's a term for that, I believe. Hmm? Oh, Krishna's, Krishna Sarup. Do you know the name of that type of verse? He's busy. He's busy. He's busy. <laughs> we have a question for you. What is the name of this type of verse? But he's from Nepal. He, 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 I don't know. Krishna Ravi Yoga Jata Prema Cheshtita. That that type of verse. What is it called? There's a name for it. Okay, that's a research project. Okay, but I'm trying to point out that later in this chapter we get this different type of verse. Brahmana sajjana nari nana dravye thali bhari aila shave jyotuka laiya jena kancha shona jutti dakki bala kera murti ashivara khare shukka paiya It's the same as our Guru Puja song. That, again, it has another name. I was sure you would know. Okay, some research project for you. <laughs> so this comes up. This comes in this chapter. This um, it, it, th- that type of verse. It, it's a very lyrical type of verse to describe Lord Chaitanya's appearance. Suddenly he shifts into this very lyrical mode. In any case, um, what I found interesting is that Krishna Kaviraj also speaks of. Mahaprabhu's life in terms of periods, um, you know, poganda, you know, as as if speaking of Krishna's, the sections of Krishna's life. And he divides them up into numbers of years, and the numbers of years turn out to be quite, um, what's the word I want? They're, they're quite equal. You get 24 years. Uh, in Grihasta Ashram and then 24 years in the Sannyasa Ashram and then you get 6 years of that Sannyasa Ashram he's traveling in South India and then 18 years it's, it's uh, symmetri- yeah there's a symmetry there but at the same time there's a bit of an asymmetry because somewhere I believe it's in this chapter Krishnadas says the 
second half, his pastimes after his grihastha ashram, his sannyas ashram time, are more important. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Why is he saying that? And then I couldn't help but wonder, because he's also in this chapter speaking, he's glorifying Vrindavan Das Thakur, and he's saying, you know, actually the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu have already been described so wonderfully by Vrindavan Das Thakur. So what am I doing? Well, he says basically, I'm just filling in the gaps. There were a few things that he did not elaborate on, so I'm going to do that. Simply helping out as a servant. He, he takes the very humble position as assisting, really, Vrindavan Das Thakur and filling in some gaps. But then he says... More important pastimes, the ones which were not so much described by Vrindavan Das Thakur. The more important pastimes are his pastimes after leaving Navavi. Why does he say that? Well, we can perhaps uh, reflect on that. But one reason, and there can be multiple reasons, we can say, well, trans, you know, ult- that's ultimately, that's where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his pastimes as sannyasi, where he does this relishing, where he dives into this ocean of rasa ever more uh, extensively than he does prior to that. Uh, Another reason could be, and this is the historian in me, forgive me for this pure speculation, but there was this distance that had developed between the devotees in uh, Bengal and the devotees in Vrindavan. And Krishna's Kaviraj has, is living in Vrindavan, and he's living there most of his life. And there is a sense of mission that the devotees in Vrindavan have to establish what is uh, Krishna consciousness uh, as taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And there's a sense of mission to write this out uh, in all of the literature of the Goswamis, and to send it to Bengal. And why send it to Bengal? So that the Bengali devotees will understand what is the deep theology of Krishna consciousness as taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's possible that Krishna Das Kaviraj is saying, you know, you... You Navadvip Vasis are thinking that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's whole pastimes are those uh, when he was living with amongst you in Navadvi. Well, that's, that's all very wonderful, but there's something more going on. And then he takes even a step further and says, these are more important pastimes. <laughs> when he goes to Jagannath, when he travels, when he comes back, when he goes to Rindavan, he goes to Jagannath Puri, spends 18 years there. What does he do there? Krishna Ravi Yoga Jata Prema Cheshtita Ashadiya Purna Koila Apanavanchita in separation from Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu relished all these ecstatic pastimes and thus he fulfilled his own desires. That's what he is doing. That's his um, that's his occupation. <laughs> that's what Lord Chaitanya does for a living. Now, we usually think of you do something for a living means you do something to maintain your, you know, to pay the bills. Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not have to worry about paying the bills because, uh, why? Because King Prataparudra was so much happy to have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri. Um, Vasudeva Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was so happy to have uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Puri, uh, the head priest, well, you can say Sarabhoma, but also the head, the main manager of the uh, Puri temple. What is his name? Uh, what do I want to say? Kash, not Kashi Mishra. Hmm? No. Uh, okay, name slipping my mind. The one who was told, now you make all the arrangements for uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's living, he's, now he's going to live here. You make all the arrangements. That was Kashishvar, I believe. 
Kashi Mishra, okay. Okay. All right, so Kashi, uh, Kashi Mishra. Sorry? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, <clears throat> living expenses, everything <laughs> on that level, it's all taken care of, no problem. So we can say, <clears throat> what is he doing for a living? He is, he is uh, he's feeling separation from Krishna and he is relishing. That is giving him life. That is giving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu life to think of, of Krishna. But how to think of Krishna? That we hear about in uh, the previous previous verse. Vidyapati Jayadeva Chandida Sergita Ashadena Ramananda Sharupa Sahita. The Lord used to read the books of Vidyapati Jayadeva and Chandidas, relishing their songs with his confidential associates like who? Oh, like Sarav Damodar and Sri Ramananda Roy. <laughs> okay, here it just mentions Sarv Damodar Goswami and Sri Ramananda Roy. So he's um, this is what he's doing for a living. This is he's he's sustaining himself. He would he would give up this life. He's feeling so much se separation from uh, Lord Krishna that he would just give up this life. So many times the devotees were worried that that's what he's doing. Because he's jumping into the Yamuna, he's jumping into the ocean, he's, you know, doing all all these things that we don't know if he's gonna survive. We have to, you know, make sure he's he's okay. All of that's uh, you know, expressing this intense separation from Krishna. But wait a minute. What is this about separation from Krishna? He is Krishna. <laughs> Right? He's Krishna. What is this? What is this nonsense? <laughs> Why doesn't somebody just remind him that he's Krishna? Well, they tried to do that. I mean, throughout the whole Chaitanya Charitamrita, that's part of the, you know, the the fun, if you like, of, of reading Chaitanya Charitamrita is the devotees are saying, you know, you are Krishna. And what does Lord Chaitanya do in response when he hears that? He covers his ears. Well, yeah, he won't take it. <laughs> he won't accept that. So, yes, he's Krishna. That's our understanding. The first 12 chapters of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, we get that drilled into us, in effect, that he is Krishna. And, you know, as Prabhupada is saying about uh, reading the first nine cantos of Bhagavatam before you get to the tenth canto, understand who is this Krishna um, very uh, thoroughly before you go into the tenth canto to, to hear, to read Krishna's pastimes. Uh, so similarly, we, we understand, okay, ontologically, who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is Krishna. But the last thing on his mind... <laughs> is that he is Krishna. He is, he is feeling separation from Krishna. Separation from Krishna in such a way that uh, he is relishing it. Asvadiya, ash, in Bengali, ashadiya, right? Ashadiya, asvadiya, asvadana. Uh, can mean tasting, it can also just mean eating. It can mean relishing, it can mean all these sorts of things that we associate with our tongue. Well, what is that about? Uh, again, something perhaps a bit odd. We just heard that what he's doing is he's hearing or reading a poetry. And then we're hearing that he's tasting po What do you mean tasting poetry? Well, relishing. Now, we don't have a problem in English and in most languages with this sort of metaphorical crossover uh, between uh, the aesthetic taste and the physical taste. You get that in, I don't know if you get it in all languages, but most, the languages I'm familiar with you certainly do, that, um, you know, someone has good taste in um, clothing uh, or furniture, <laughs> 
how you know home decoration oh this person has good taste this person has bad taste uh, uh, this is um, we make this connection this this uh, you can say uh, a metaphorical crossover without thinking almost to the point that we don't think it's a metaphor anymore and you get, um, in fact, the idea of dead metaphors, where something is no longer considered a metaphor because it's so part of the language. But it's sometimes nice to recover a metaphor or you know, remember, aha, this is actually about tasting, and then we're extending that. But there's something else that's happening here, I would suggest. And that is, uh, let's see how many of you know this word. <laughs> um, Synesthesia. Huh? What does synesthesia mean? Something like fantasia? No. You know what synesthesia means? Uh, Pushkar from. Give it a guess. <laughs> Yeah, you're on the track. It's a it's a kind of synthesis of the senses. Sense synthesis. It has nothing to do with sin. Well, it might, but uh, in our context, certainly not. It's quite the opposite of that. So synesthesia is a kind of synthesis of the activities of the senses such that you can taste with your ears. You can, um, you know, you can, you can hear with your eyes and so on. That is a psychological effect which has been observed that people have. Shrutaksha, yeah, exactly. So that's synesthesia. Um, now, where do we get a description of synesthesia uh, to the max? Anybody want to? Okay, I, I won't. I won't. Um, in the spiritual world. Okay. I'm thinking of a specific verse, and it's, um, it's one that, do we sing it with the Govinda prayers in the morning? Yes, there we go. Angani yasya sakalendriya vrittimanti. What, uh, what is this being said there? Angani, uh, the limbs, literally. Yes, yes. Sakala indriya vritti manti. They are, all of the indriyas uh, are functioning. Vritti, are, are full of function. Vritti mant, vritti man. Uh, so, in effect, all of the senses, all of the, all of the limbs of the body are totally multi-sensitized. How's that? <laughs> but who's, who is this whose senses are multi-sensitized? <clears throat> Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Vajami. I'm worshipping Govinda. Whose senses are multi-sensitized? Who is the uh, synesthetic artist of all artists or something like that. He's, he's, the, he's the prime synesthet. Ooh. <laughs> well, um, okay, so that's, that's Krishna in the spiritual world. Not only in the spiritual world, it's Krishna when he comes to this world. But how does he come to this world to, to do that synesthetic activity? He comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, but how does it get expressed? It, it gets expressed uh, simply as tasting, as relishing. And what is he relishing? He's relishing poetry. Well, that's interesting. He's relishing poetry. Now, I'm just wondering, will that day ever come in my lifetime that I would be able to uh, relish in any, compar not even comparable, but in some way, um, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us to relish. What is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu trying to do when he comes to this world along with relishing and enjoying? What is he trying to do? 
He's trying to teach. He's a teacher. He wants us. And how is he teaching? Well, one way is by example. Another way is by his teachings to his followers. But yes, by his example. How do we follow this example? Well, one way we do it is that we relish remembering how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is relishing hearing this poetry. How he's relishing chanting Hare Krishna. Sometimes we're chanting Hare Krishna and we might not be relishing it all that much as we would like to. Do you ever have it? Do you ever have that experience? I have it all the time. True confession. Um, so, but we can remember that Oh, but there is the relisher, the person, the supreme personality of relishing Godhead. <laughs> That's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I remember uh, just a few days ago we were watching uh, this wonderful video of um, these old videos of Srila Prabhupada now with these, um, you know, uh, added on explanations by the different devotees who were there that Yadubar Prabhu has done. You've you've seen some of that? Yes. Oh, okay. It, it's the next, the next three uh, Sundays in a row. To be oh, okay. Yeah, it's highly re relishable. <laughs> uh, and within that, you see, I believe it's not the first Rathayatra in San Francisco, but the second one. And the preparation from that, you see, uh, you know, uh, Jayananda Prabhu preparing the uh, Rath cart and so on. If I'm not mistaken, it was the first Ratha Yatra, and you can read about this in uh, uh, Satsurup Maharaj's book, that the devotees noted, one of the devotees noted, that Srila Prabhupada was remembering, so to say, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, while the devotees were sort of well, the Rath Yatra was going on, or maybe it was afterward. Uh, the, the devotees were thinking it was a lot of fun. It was a party, you know, and it was great going with this, um, you know, procession. And, and they were thinking it was all great fun. And then Srila Prabhupada mentioned that this is happening in Puri and that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is dancing and relishing um, his Leela of separation uh, with, uh, with with Lord Jagannath, so then the devotee thought, "Oh wow, gosh, you know, Prophet's on a whole different level <laughs> of enjoying this than we are." <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of struck the devotee, and I don't remember whether it's Satsuru Maharaj who, who remembers this or who it was, but they're kind of struck by that. Oh, he's remembering Chaitanya. We're just sort of having a party and he's remembering Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. It would have been someone else. Yes, Prabhu. Because there was a threat uh -huh. by some hippie groups. So he got out of the car, made his uh, appearance and Dandavas and then left. So uh -huh. it was another time. Okay, it may have been another Ratayatra, yes, thank you. So, um, so yes, teaching, uh, but how to learn from that teaching uh, by, by the example, how do we learn from that example? By uh, remembering that example, by recollecting that example, by remembering uh, Haridas Thakur sitting and chanting, um, you know, three lakhs of Hare Krishna mantra every day. Uh, in that way, we are learning. We are following. I saw, you know, in my class, I'm, I, I mentioned this last time. I've been teaching about Buddhism in my class at UF, and uh, we found a film on Zen Buddhism. The film is two hours long, and uh, <laughs> you may you, you may think, well, how can you show two hours of people just sitting there meditating? Well, it's, it shows more than that. It shows some more of their activity. But in fact, the film features a, a, a seven-day marathon that they do, uh, 
of, of sitting zazen, sitting meditation that they do once a year, uh, during which time they, do, they eat, but they don't sleep for seven days. Well, yes, they get to sleep, but they can't lie down. They have to sit the whole time. Well, they do. Some of them nod down a bit. <laughs> but some of them are, you know, quite... And they, they actually show them, you know, during the night while they're, you know, having their period of sitting, resting. But my point is that they do this incredibly intensive practice. Um, another film that I showed my students a part of <laughs> is called... Uh, what is it called? Kung Fu Monks in America. <laughs> and I showed part of it because it shows how these, uh, these preacher, Buddhist preacher monks come from China to America uh, from the Shaolin Temple, which has become a huge success. They have thousands of people coming there now to learn Kung Fu. And, um, you know, you watch these incredible acrobatics of these <laughs> Kung Fu uh, monks, and uh, and then there's some narration, and these guys are practicing ten hours a day, twelve hours a day. You know, I mean, this is serious stuff. Uh, so, yeah, how do we practice Krishna consciousness with some intensity? You know, to become uh, such that we can really relish. Uh, in, in some way as followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That I think we want to reflect on. All right, I'll stop there uh, unless there's a question or comment. Yes? We have such a phobia around showing emotions mm. that it's a hajiya. We had one situation... I'm not going to mention a name where a devotee was really experiencing very deeply the chanting of the holy name. He wasn't making a big show, but there were some tears. Mm. And so he was asked not to lead kirtan for a while. <laughs> so I think this would be worth discussing a little bit, because especially in this country, we tend to really be reserved when it comes to anything emotional mm. and become very suspicious if somebody's displaying anything emotional. And yet, mm -hmm. beyond any scripture in the world, our scripture is filled with, you know, these words like relishing and tasting and emotions and mm -hmm. fainting and people falling on the ground and Eddie Ball. You know, <laughs> so it <laughs> seems, how do we, you know, after 30, 40 year, 30 years, 20 years, people began to go other places because they were feeling very dry and there were other sources that were encouraging people more in that direction. Mm. So maybe that's something we could, we might want to say something about. Ah, that may be a, yeah, that's a big topic. I agree that um, we can go too far the other way of being suspicious of emotion when, after all, uh, we understand that the evocation of emotion is what we're about. I mean, that's what bhakti is. We're not jnanis. We're not yogis. We're not. Uh, we're not any of that. So, so, so then, what you know? What are we doing if we see some emotion and then try to squash it or whatever? Um, I think we're in an awkward situation in a sense in that, yes, that is there, and, and our movement as a society, as, as an institution, is um, hmm, we're, we're, some, we're kind of like teenagers as a society who are you know, trying to find our way as, as a tradition, and we, we want to make sure that the boat is... is uh, is, is going in the right direction and that it's not being blown over by every exhibition of, of emotion that might blow in the door, which might 
be something other than what we understand is this uh, this wonderfully profound emotion of love of God. Um, and then the danger comes that something that is genuine comes, we squash it. Um, I was just talking to one of my students. He's a, I forgot the term, it's not exactly Pentecostal. He's, he's Christian and he's, um, he's a missionary. Basically, he wants to become a missionary. Nice guy. Uh, but he, um, the Pentecostals, you may know, are a, a Christian tradition which really goes for the emotion. And in their gatherings, as I understand, they're really cut loose. <laughs> and they're one of the fastest growing uh, you know, missions, Christian missions in the world. They're, they're, they're becoming popular in South America. In North America, they're already uh, around very extensively. Because people want emotion, they uh, they want they want to feel it. They don't want to just think it. And we say yes, we want to feel it too. Uh, but then somebody feels something, we go, whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> what was that? You have to be here 30 years first and have all the, you know, and maybe even you have your 30 years here. You know. Krishna Kshetra starts showing tears while he's chanting. Something must be wrong with him. I think he's gone over the deep end. He's been he's been teaching at UF. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pushkar, you wanted to comment something on this, didn't you? On on, on Mother No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, on Mother Hari Nam's. Uh, no. I, oh. Well, I, do, I have some general over these last few verses. Actually, we read the Chandi Das uh, Vidyapati verse a couple times. That uh, I was just musing over the fact that Kaviraj Goswami doesn't quote. I can't recall where he even quotes any of those three fellows. Uh, there's a little uh, hmm. Jayadev maybe uh, somewhere. I don't know. Did any of those are ever quoted in Chaitanya Charita? And uh, so, <laughs> why is that? Hmm. Yeah. Looks like if this Kondo is what Chaitanya Maru was relishing, and it. he doesn't quote it, uh, hmm. duh! I don't know what's going on. Prango in the wants to respond to that. I believe. About this, that famous verse, I heard Prabhupada a voice in MP3 like. Tatala Saikata Bari Vindu Samasutamita Ramani Samaji. Prabhupada explained very nicely. Also this uh Dasavatar is from Git Govinda. So we do sing Git Govinda uh, yeah, the introduction to yes. it. Yeah. <clears throat> I was uh, going to say that Puskar Prabhu actually mentioned me a story sometime back that while Prabhupada He's was leading Kirtan in San Francisco or Berkeley, I forgot. And uh Gargamuni Prabhu, he felt a little emotional crying because other devotees are crying, so he went out. So Prabhupada later on asked him that, uh, why did you leave? So oh, I started feeling crying. He said, that's okay, we well, should, that's what our mission is. <laughs> there you go. So these things took place, but uh, not uh, emphasized more. Yeah. Yeah. But then uh, <clears throat> I was thinking of Srila Baladeva Vidyavasan Thakur's, he gives very thorough of who Jiva on Jiva Tattva, he was explaining, Jiva Tattva, that we are Satchit Ananda. Mm -hmm. And that original idea of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sutakura and Srila Prabhupada, this thinking, feeling, willing, acting, it is reflects Satchit Ananda. Thinking is Sat. And that feeling is Ananda. That's Everybody in this world, whether no. he's a murderer, rapist, or Hare Krishna, all are after Ananda. Are you trying to tell me that I'm already feeling Ananda, I just don't know it yet? No, no, oh. <laughs> we, are seeking, we are seeking for it, we are seeking for it, but the pure form is coming through this Biraho and Shambhogli past Okay. <laughs> we cannot escape from Ananda. Okay. That's what we are. Ah. So whether yeah. we have a feeling through Krishna consciousness or we will go somewhere else for something else. Yeah. We can't escape yeah. from it. Okay. Uh, Jai Gopal, you want to say something? In regards to Mother Harinam's question, there's um, 
I think the main reason why Srila Prabhupada and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were preaching the, and the, you know for the mental of a preacher they're also teaching by examples like you mentioned earlier so what was going on in Navadweep in that time were so many sages so the last thing you know one wants and it's common everywhere you know so I think the main reason why they're you, you hear so many pastimes where Prabhupada's beating, you know, gives a cane to his cane to one of his children to beat this guy. Because it was, it's went too far to the other side. Hmm. So they're, you know, looking out for that. But at the same time, within the association of devotees, it, you know, can take place. But I think that's possibly why a lot of preachers are conscious of how they exert their emotions. Okay. Uh, yes, these are good points. Uh, when Harshari he talks about that in his book, so I'm not spilling the beans or anything, but uh, he caused a furor throughout the whole Mandaban because he, he had heard that uh, Prabhupada said, said if somebody was rolling on the ground, that was in San Francisco years before, kick him in the head and see if he's really in ecstasy. So he kicked this local <laughs> bridge bossy in the head. Oh, no. And that caused a furor throughout the whole Vrindavan. And the man, uh, Prabhupada had to bring the man and personally apologize to him himself. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's a tendency to go really militant about some stupid, you know, extreme things. I mean, you have to be a little cool-headed as Prabhupada Yeah. You have to... If they are rolling underground... Kick them in their face, and then if they continue to roll in ecstasy, then they are truly feeling ecstasy. <laughs> uh-huh. well, he, said, he said it more than once. He was in India. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't there when. Hard so, came, I mean, one thing you can take from that is that Prabhupada is saying uh, there are tests. One of them is kicking in the head. <laughs> Now, we might not want to go to that extreme because that could have consequences, could have legal consequences, uh, and so on. But there are tests, um, and, you know, that's maybe a whole other discussion to recall what sorts of tests there are. But I, I appreciate Mother Hainan's point is, uh, is that we, w- we don't want to banish emotion uh, from the get-go, because that's self-defeating. That's not our philosophy. I think that's kind of your point in a sense, isn't it? It is, and also we might, you know, I think that we have, we have a public standard. Sheila Prabhupada said that there was a standard. Thank you. We have a public standard. Sheila Prabhupada was very careful with the display of emotions, and sometimes they would come out, and they were very sobering and humbling for the devotees to see but um, but he was very careful to set that example for us mm-hmm. so at the same time we could more and more meet together with one another we could find smaller forums I know that um, there's devotees here who come together mm-hmm. to to go deeply into Srila Prabhupada's books and and um, and that may be something that we can think about more and more, just to, mm. to find ways to relish very deeply um, these Not pastimes. Not Gopi Baba clubs, though. No, I don't think we <laughs> should practice being peacocks. I wasn't saying that. I agree with you a thousand percent. I really wasn't thinking about going there at all. I don't, I'm very mm. careful in that. I wasn't really thinking about that, so that didn't even occur to me. Not in that way but mostly just um, cultivating the heart, cultivating the heart, which mm-hmm. we can do in all our relationships. Mm-hmm. I mean, in Vaishnav etiquette, in the temple, want, and then you know, opening that opportunity for the cultivation of the heart, even in our interactions with each other, even the way that we, that we think about this philosophy, because we can get very cerebral. We certainly have enough books you know, we can make so many points that never touch the heart. Mm-hmm. You know, so because this is so much about transformation of the heart, then that's really what we're seeking in this opportunity to associate with the person whose heart is so big 
that he can encompass the love of unlimited universes and unlimited living entities in unlimited quantities of time, such a personality we're trying to have a relationship with through our chanting of the holy name. So cultivating the heart. More like that. Nice. Sh- oh. Hmm. have some uh, sentimental uh, feelings and they might cry, but they're different than those that are exhibited by those that are on the highest plane of self-realization. I guess my question would be, is there room for, is there room for feeling in between, you know, way up there at, you know, the exalted level and, uh, and the only sentimental feeling? Is there room for devotional sentiment yeah yeah (laughs) I was going to sort of end but I see lots more want to say something Um, yes Ramachandra wanted to say something Um, Mm. I had a comment it's kind of a subject changer but uh, anyways in the beginning of class when you were reading the verse I noticed the word porna specifically Mm -hmm. and you know that means fulfilling in the translation it was fulfill Mm -hmm. and I remember the verse Om Purnam Adaha Purnam Idam that Krishna is fulfilling the desires of all living entities within the material and spiritual worlds unlimited living entities Mm -hmm. and yet what fulfills his desires the literature is written about himself by pure devotees I just thought that was interesting. Mm. So. Yeah. The word Purna by itself just means full. So you have the full moon, Purnima means uh, the full moon day, like that. Yes. Uh, yes. Mm. I was just think. thinking of one word that I thought would kind of like help clarify the whole thing is that Sambandagya is uh, mm-hmm. like the whole the Sriman Bhagavatam Sambandhabi Day and Prayojana so if something's out of place and as they surrender to me I award them accordingly and uh, you can have your shadow attachment that's mm-hmm. mentioned in Ector Devotion but the, the Sambandha you're actually experiencing your relationship with Krishna in the beginning stages and if it's mm-hmm. still the person is uh, hasn't gone through the Sambandhika because I mean as far as I remember the Srimad Bhagavatam um, when it's searching out after the absolute truth has to search that up to this so mm. in all circumstances otherwise Rite Artam you know it's uh, it could be just a reflection mm. so I think that was helpful for discriminating yeah, certainly we're all after substance, vastu, not, not, not the shadow, the substance. Yes, uh, yes, I don't know the name. You were um, mentioning about the quotes of uh, Jayadev Goswami and Chandidas and mm-hmm. Vidyapati, and I was, uh, I was remember, remembering the. Uh, the confidential associates uh, Sarup Damodar some of his songs were quoted in the Chaitanya Charitamrita some of the he would compose poetry for Lord Chaitanya and a little bit of that was quoted yes or you know the confidential pastimes between Lord Chaitanya and Ramananda Roy they seem they seem to have the most bring out the most feelings yeah confidential feelings but it is interesting still Pushkarpur's point of why not even one quote from, say, Chandidas might be there? Um, that one might ask that question, and I think it's true. Yes. Further, I guess we'll. It's Saturday. I guess we can. Uh, we don't have Didn't to. Didn't Vishnu Daskai really put more of those quotes and that whole mood in uh, Govinda Lilamrita? Ah, that's a point. Maybe he was saving it for Govinda Lilamrita. Yeah. Okay, still, he's saving it and writing it earlier. Anyway.
On that note, we'll end here. Thank you all very much. Shri Ila Prabhupada Adagi. Shri Chaitanya Jai Dhamridagi. Gaur Brahmanande.